Welcome to Lecture Online. Besides using the concept of limits to describe where derivatives come from, we can also talk about the limits of a function. So let's go ahead and spend some time taking a look at that. And here's our first example. So let's say we have a function f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 4. And they're asking you to find the limit as x approaches 3. Now that's kind of a strange concept for a simple polynomial function like this. Or polynomial function, I should say. Not polynomial, but polynomial function. So, how do you do that? How do you find the limit as x approaches 3? Well, let's go ahead and rewrite that, but instead of writing f of x, we're going to write the function itself. So, we're trying to find the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 2x plus 4. So, let's go ahead and plug the value of 3 in there. So, this is equal to, when we plug the value of 3 in there, we get 3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus 4. So this is equal to 9 minus 6, which is 3, plus 4, which is equal to 7. So therefore, we can say that the limit as x approaches 3 of the function x squared minus 2x plus 4 is equal to 7. But now you say, well, wait a minute. Why do I have to go through all this trouble? Why can't I just not evaluate the function? How is this different from this? What if I write simply this? F when x is equal to 3 is equal to 3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus 4, which is 9 minus 6, which is 3 plus 4, which is equal to 7. I get the exact same result. So how is this different from this? Well, in this particular case, there's no difference. The approach is different, but the end result is the same. But there are plenty of occasions where we cannot simply plug in the value that x approaches into the function to get a result because then we may have, uh, for example, zero denominator or something that we're not allowed to calculate or we have an indeterminate ratio or a number of things that can happen when we plug the limit in. In this particular case, because it's a simple polynomial, the evaluation of the function for the value x equals 3 and the limit as x approaches 3 is exactly the same. Another way of looking at that, the limit of a function, is we can do the following thing. We can set up a table of values. We can set up some x values and then the, then the, the um, corresponding values for y or the function evaluated at, at that function, at that value. So for example, let's say we start with the value of 4. When we plug in the value of a 4 for x, what do we get? Well, that gives us 16 minus 8, which is 8, plus 4, which gives us 12. What if x is 3.5? What does the function then become? And for that, we probably need a calculator. So let's go ahead. So 3.5 squared, 3.5 squared, minus 2 times 3.5, which is minus 7, uh, plus 4, and we get 9.25. Okay, what happens if x is equal to 3.1? Notice how I let x get closer and closer and closer to the ultimate value for 3. I'm going to approach x equals 3, slowly but surely, as I get closer and closer to 3, what happens to the function? So when I plug in 3.1 in my function, I get 3.1 squared minus 6.2, 2 times 3.1, minus 4 equals, oh, oh, plus 4, haha, <laughs> plus 4. I keep subtracting 4, but I'm supposed to add 4, which is equal to 7.41. How about 3.01, what becomes, what is the function equal to now? So 3.01, square that, minus 2 times 3.01, which is 6.02, plus 4 equals, so we get 7.04. Now notice, as I get closer and closer and closer to 3, if I allow x to get closer to the value of 3, which is ultimately what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find out the value of the function as x approaches 3. Notice, by just simple inspection, I can see that the value for the function seems to be approaching the value of 7. So that's what we mean by the limit. As we get closer and closer to a particular value that we want to plug in for x, we get a particular value for the function. In this case, it looks like it is, it is 7. And then ultimately, when we plug in the value 3 into the function, we get 7. Well, the reason why we want to use this approach rather than this approach, not of course in this simple example, but in many other examples, and some of them we're going to see in the future videos, we cannot plug in the actual value. We cannot al allow ourselves to plug in the particular value that we want to find the, um, 
we cannot plug in the particular value that we're trying to approach because when we do, we get something that we cannot have in mathematics, such as a division by zero or some indeterminate form that we cannot evaluate. So based upon that, we can now see that, in this case, finding the limit of a function and evaluating a function is exactly the same, but in some additional examples, we're going to see they're not going to be the same. And so you can see that by using this type of approach, we can see what we mean by finding the limit of a function. We allow the value for x to approach the value that we're looking for, like right here, we allow it to approach that, and then we see what the corresponding value for y seems to uh, become. So to help us in the future, we want to express this right here. Or matter of fact, let's go ahead and express this right here. Let's see how we say that in proper English. So what we're doing there is we're finding the limit of the function. And of course, in this case, the function f of x as x approaches the value 3. And so that's how, that's how we express this particular way of writing that expression, finding the limit of the function f of x as x approaches 3. So that's what we mean by the limit of a function. And now let's show you some more examples in the next videos of how to do that when it's not simply just plug in the value for x. That's how we do that.